Let's keep it rolling. We got Richard Matthews on the list here at 176. Perennial disrespected. <clears throat> For sure. I mean, just has produced most. I mean, wide receiver 36 last year. Yeah, as bad as that offense was and as bad as Mariota's numbers overall were. I mean, Mariota, Mariota, Mariota did a lot to help them win games and played well at the end of the games. And, and, and still, I don't think he's thrown an interception in the red zone. But overall, the numbers and the offense in general took a step back and didn't produce. They didn't have production. You know, right. they didn't produce a whole ton, a lot. And he still finished, like you said, as the wide receiver, thirty six. So, so I mean, th this is a, a fine stab with me. I I like him as a receiver. I like what he does. I think he's a nice role player for your team. He can, you can add him late in the draft here, and he can help you out throughout the season when you have a banged up player or you see a good matchup, or you know maybe this offense turns around and he's rolling and. All of a sudden, you want to start him every week. So right. I'm all in at Rashard Matthews at 176. Stick with the Titans. Stick Move with over the Titans. 183, Jonu Smith. Jonu Smith, old old Delaney's getting a little long in the tooth. You saw Jonu get some opportunities last year. He looked decent in doing so. Yeah, I, so. I really liked the – I watched the interview of him after the game when he scored his first touchdown. I think he was on a screen pass, used his blockers well. Scored a long touchdown, and, and after the game, they, they had won that game, and they asked him about it, and he was like, oh, it was, it was awesome. I didn't really know what to do. It was my first touchdown, but I knew there was going to be more, so I just settled down, and, and it's not – it's not about that. It's about the getting the W and let's move yeah. on to next week. Like he was, his head is in the right spot. Delaney's giving his due as well. Delaney said that you know the team's in good hands with John Ewan. and he compares whenever. a lot physically to yeah. Delaney and, and what they do there. So for I, sure, I, I'd I, be down to take Johnu Smith if you punted on tight ends early in the draft. This is a solid or, late round I mean, swing. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'd also just grab him. I right, mean, that's what I'm saying. Like I, if if I probably drafted a tight end by now, right. Um, but I, this is a guy that I would love to put on the bottom of my bench and just kind of wait wait for a year or two, let Delaney play his way out because Delaney deserves as much time as he wants to play. Delaney's been great. And he's a young 32, 33. He didn't have a lot of wear and tear on him early in his career now with San, San Francisco. Fran, so. Had Vernon there for a right. little while while he was there. Which we've said that before on this show if you listen to this show. Sure. Keep it, keeping it right in the tight end range. At next pick down. Next spot, 184, Gerald Everett, Everett. Either one of these guys I'm okay with grabbing and stashing for, for a year, and, and I maybe maybe I like Everett a little bit more than Janu, but... From just, an athletic profile standpoint, perhaps, and maybe, you probably maybe got just, more draft capital maybe as just well. from the... Offense in general. Right, from the standpoint of what the Rams are doing and, and kind of seeing where they're heading and not knowing exactly where the Titans are heading. I think I like Everett just a smidge more than I like Johnny, but I'll take either one. Absolutely. Uh, the Rams do have that other tight end there, Tyler Higby. Higby yeah. Um, and he he kind of – he he's an athletic – he's got a nice athletic but not profile. The, not this regime's guy. No, but uh, has stayed out of trouble. That was yeah, the that problem was the with him. Um, he stayed out of trouble up to this point, so that's good. He, he showed some, some flashes last year, uh, but I don't think – I mean, I'm still. I'd rather have Everett, for sure. Yeah. And I'd take Everett or Johnny Smith. I'd take them Either both one. if I had. Sure. You know, whatever. I got them both on a couple of dynasty squads, and I I love just looking at my little practice squad with those two guys down there. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, keeping the train rolling here. Devonte Booker at 192, and D'Angelo Henderson at 266. I think is an interesting uh, tandem to pair up. Very obtainable. I think C.J. Anderson's probably on the outs, which is good for him. I'm still a fan of him. Sure. I think he could go somewhere else and get proper usage. I like C.J. Anderson, another guy who is a perennial. People love to hate. Love to hate him. Stays at the player haters ball. Yeah. <laughs> hate, uh, he's hate, he's hate, got a hate. room in the hotel, I think, just on Ooh. lockdown that they just live in. <laughs> um, but I do think what the uh, Broncos were doing offensive line-wise and, and kind of where they were heading, I liked where the offensive line was heading. They need a QB. I think this could be a nice situation. I liked, the, I liked what Booker has shown me. People like to hate on him a little bit. And then D'Angelo Henderson is super cheap at 266, so I like the combination of that duo there of just maybe getting a cheap tandem. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid... Uh, standpoint to take there. I I really like what I saw from from Booker. There were points there in the regular season where he came out and was making some crazy plays, like sc scoring plays, like yeah. leaping over dudes and bowling them over. And I thought for sure when he saw him do that, that everyone was going to be on board. They were like, oh, damn, Booker's good. And no, now the like cat's him. out of the bag. Nope. And But no, he's still being Negative. super disrespected. People don't like him. 
And like the Broncos are su- seem super bullish on him. Yeah. And when he was a rookie playing with CJ Anderson and they were both healthy for a while, I talked about this a while on one of the older podcasts about when they were really firing on all cylinders with both of those guys, I thought they were both working really well together and they were both kind of working off of each other. And I think um, that's something that could be, you know, kind of happening with Booker and D'Angelo Henderson, who's an interesting guy. Um, but again, just like the the uh, attainability of the 192 of Booker and the 266 of D'Angelo Henderson, maybe for a cheap tandem. Yeah, so it's all a swing to take. And if they got they bring, I'm, they're going to bring in a quarterback of some sort, whether it's whether they land Kirk or maybe they go get Bradford or something. They're or Keenum. I bet you they're definitely going to get. You know, LA wants a serviceable quarterback. Maybe they maybe they draft one and then just pick up somebody to start in the interim yeah we'll kind of see what happens there i've seen got to be something they got to do something to improve that right situation. the quarterback the, the defense quarterback. is too good defense is good enough it's fallen off a little bit but a little bit and they're probably gonna lose to leave most likely but uh it's still still a solid squad still decent organization let's uh let's move along we got uh 197 djax what do you think about that well that's like a hundred spots falling off in a year Right. I don't know why. I guess like it wasn't his fault that he didn't have a good year. I don't think he played extremely terrible. I think we mentioned it earlier that I, I you know, on, on maybe the, the prior podcast of just saying that Jameis just, they weren't on the same page. I saw Djax be open plenty of times and just wasn't hit when he needed to be hit or hit in the right spot. And I, I think this is a, a really nice value of somebody who could play ginormous dividends at 200. Yeah. Of a guy who could, you know, yeah, it's not a Being near the term. top of the end in 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 long pl- long touchdown plays, and he, he it was there last year. Like I said, they just didn't quite connect. Jameis was a little erratic on some deep ball throws, and he was doing more than just being a deep threat last year. And Jameis just wasn't connecting with him. So, I think at one ninety seven, Djax is still a nice little pickup. He's still got the speed. He didn't show any signs of really slowing down too, too much over the course of last year to warrant a 100-point drop-off, right. in my opinion. Somehow he got out of a, a, a trouble with the law. The, his car was, quote, stolen. The old car was stolen. There wasn't was some me. guns and marijuana inside of it. But Good it, for he, D-Jack, It though. wasn't me. Good for him. He beat it. He probably fled from the scene so fast he was a blur because he's got <laughs> that speed. You couldn't see him, but whatever. Good for no him. No trouble. So he got out of it. That's nice. Uh, this isn't a long-term play. I think the Bucks will probably get out from underneath him after this right. year. But I mean, they can save at themselves 197, like ten million after this year, right? And they should. And they got Chris Godwin coming up. We talked about that on the last podcast. But I mean, at one ninety-seven, this guy a, in one year could pay huge dividends. So he, he can make you some money, right? That's what I'm looking for right now. A and guy the, who can the Bucks make me last some money. year were a dumpster fire. Sure, everybody quit. So. I think uh, you know it's a new season. Yeah. I'm down to take a swing right there. Let's let's move along. 199, Yeldon, interesting. Got got one more year hanging out in, in Ivory's uh, out of there. Ivory's out of there. Fournette and, and, deals with some Knicks. You know, Yeldon wasn't any good, and then at the end of this year, you kind of saw him come in into that passing game role, and he's and, always been good. And the really passing thrive game right. 50 balls two years ago. So around 200 ADP, interesting guy for me. And you know, maybe you have to wait this year before he's actually usable, but he's probably going to go somewhere else in a year. Just thought that was interesting. And then his counterpart, Corey Grant, also a really uh, fun guy. Yeah, doesn't even have an doesn't ADP. have an ADP. Somebody that I would be on my radar to picking up at the end of a draft or trying to acquire in a trade just to, just to hang on for for either you know he might be a little useful in season, but next season moving uh, moving forward, both of those guys I think would be really interesting. Who else you got? Well, John Brown's name is down there at two hundred. It's, it's it's a mentionable name yeah. down there at 200, a guy who everybody had liked for a long, long time, unfortunately had a little sickle cell issue, has had a problem staying healthy because of that. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but I picked him up in one of our home leagues. Somebody dropped him just at the end of the year. He was like a week kind of 16, just scoop up off the waiver wire because people were dropping for younger guys, and I just decided to scoop him up. Interesting guy in my mind. Of, he's of a, a guy, free agent. He's a free agent and a guy who people loved for a long time. So again, like we mentioned with multiple guys like Corey Coleman, and we talked about it with Corey Lock or uh, Tyler Lockett and multiple other guys. He's a guy who was a kind of like a cult hero. Everybody was right. waiting for John Brown to just be the next. At one point, he he was the next Antonio Brown. Like yeah. people loved Smoke, loved John yeah. Brown, 
And if he if he does get off to a little, he's a guy that I could see is very flippable quickly just because they're, again, I hate to hammer this point home podcast ever podcast, but this is a guy that there was a bunch of people who bought into it. So it's, to me, in my mind, if somebody like that can go off for a couple of weeks, he's yeah. very flippable. Solid chance you can right. flip for a profit. Keeping it moving with Charles Clay at 215. I mean, Get you're, out not, of town. you're not paying anything for this guy. And at one point, he was one of the better tight ends in the league last year. He's had a problem with staying healthy. But when he is healthy, the offense basically runs through. Right. He was great. They don't want to throw it to a wide receiver. So very interesting to me with Charles Clay there at 215. How about 221 with Peyton Barber? Um, just you, obviously you got Doug Cutting. And with kind of the recent news here, the question for me is, are you trying to hang on? Or are you just pumping this guy out immediately? I know this is probably maybe two weeks old or so from when that news hit but if you if you're a Peyton Barber guy who scooped him up maybe at one point when Doug wasn't playing last year and and he played and he played really well like we we did some Peyton Barber stuff at like I think week 13 of last year and we're really loving what we saw from Peyton Barber is he somebody that maybe that you might be interested in maybe the Bucks given a chance to to have a, a role on this team or is it somebody you're just immediately trying to sell for anything that you could possibly get for him because there's a vacancy right there man that's a tough that's tough i mean i guess i'd i guess i'd ring the register if i could yeah i don't know what you could really i don't get know for if you're him. gonna really get anything right. for him, but. but all they got on the roster right now is, is peyton barber and jaquiz rogers right so i i don't think that that's all they're gonna roll into the season with right you know doug's out charles sims is a free agent but they're and, probably and, gonna draft man, somebody but i mean i if if i'm the bucks like I'm, I would probably draft somebody or pick up a free agent, but like, I want to give this guy a chance. I thought what, what I saw from him at the, like he was catching balls. He was running well. Like he had some really good games. I think that week 13 game was against the Packers. It was a solid game. We yeah. Talked at about Green Bay, 23 carries for 102 yards, caught four balls for another 41 yards. Yeah. Had, had, a, had a little bit of a solid run there and I thought he looked good doing so. So I mean, still only 24 years old. Interesting guy to me at 221. He's an exclusive rights free agent. So Right. At 221, that, that that's an interesting area for me. Yeah. Then Josh Reynolds at 222. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, we liked that, him in the offseason last year. In the in the offseason, super late. And, liked his uh, ability to go down the field. He didn't rookie get drafts. too much of an opportunity. But then when he did, Robert boy, Woods he, got hurt. Right. And he came in. And they were targeting him, man. He could have had like two touchdowns in this one game, and it just didn't go his way. The ball didn't kind of fall his way, but like they were scheming him, and he was open, and he could have blo- He could have had like he could have had that Corey Coleman flash that. Well, that he, he kind of he first- kind of falls into me like a like a like a like a Josh Doxson kind. Like this guy, Josh Reynolds, is a fantastic vertical threat with phenomenal ball tracking ability. Like yeah. I love. A lot he, of long plays in right. college. I love the way he tracks the ball and catches the ball. Like I think I think he's a he's a pretty solid player. And at two twenty two, he's not going to cost you anything. You can put him at the bottom of your roster. They but don't bring Sammy back, and one of those other guys get hurt. Yeah, I mean, but if they on. do bring Sammy back, then it's a little muddy, and he's the fourth wide receiver sure. on his team. I gotta assume Tavon Austin's out of here. I can't I don't believe think we they're even bringing Sammy his back. Name. But no, you Tavon's gone. You don't think they're bringing Sammy back? I don't think so, but. Who knows? I think they could make it happen without paying all that money to Sammy. Yeah. I think they'll probably try, but who who knows? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either way, I guess. But, I mean, Josh Reynolds, solid stab, had a couple flashes. I think did score a touchdown, but he could have had some more. Yeah. Um, and, and I really like what I saw from him, both coming out of college and the little bit of work he got in the pros. To wrap this up, a couple more guys. Jared Cook at 262. Yeah. Just – Real, I mean, that's a guy I've hated on for a while because, yeah. like, with the he had a ton of athletic ability and just really thought that he just never really tried hard enough and never really put a season together. But by all means, for the Raiders last year, I thought he played really well. Yeah, bright spot in a bad uh, season. Exactly, and I think at two sixty two, that's a give me for a position that you're always struggling to find continuity at, and I'll put him at the bottom of my roster with no problem. Um, you got Rod Smith, who, if you're an Ezekiel Elliott owner at 277, is a no-brainer to me. He showed out well in his spots. And then the counterpart, Alfred Morris, at 243. Obviously, he's probably out of there, but everyone was loving the Rod Smith thing. But I thought Alfred Morris played 
great. Yo, in Alfred his Morris time. has always played pretty good. I thought he I, played I'm great on. in his time in in Dallas there when he had the chances to start for Zeke. I don't know why Alfred Morris is always just getting straight hated on. Just an interesting but. guy at 243, and he's a free agent. We'll kind of see where he lies. Rod Smith is not a free agent, but if you own Zeke, he's a guy who I'm trying to go buy. If I'm not in a startup and I'm a startup, this is a super cheap insurance policy for Zeke at Absolutely. 277. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. Yeah, he's a big dude. He can catch the ball. They use him some in red zone situations. Yeah. And, uh, had it, had he did well when they gave yeah. him his opportunity too. Yeah, JJ Nelson, another guy at two thirty-five, kind of interesting. He's flashed a yeah. couple of times. Showed you a little bit of a of evolution from being just a downfield threat, kind of working some more intermediate type of routes. Didn't have the best QB situation there in Arizona. Um, I don't know. He's, he's still a young dude. Yeah, solid but, solid swing at the very end of a draft. Absolutely, and uh, like I said, he's flashed multiple times and and had. Parts and pieces of the season where it was like, oh, he's pretty electric. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of guys I want to put at the bottom of my back. Guys who I'm swinging for the fences. Right. And if they turn into something awesome, great. I can flip them or hang on to them. Uh, another guy on on the Dolphins here, everyone wants to give Carew a ton of love. And if, if this guy Carew leaves, love. it's Carew, it's Carew, it's Carew. And maybe it is. And and to be fair, Carew's a bigger bodied six one, supposed to be a, a you know pretty fluid guy. But uh Jakeem Grant. I know he's only five six or five little seven, a little sparky over there, but I, I like what this guy brings to the table. Again, he doesn't have an ADP, but just somebody that I would add to the bottom of my roster because why not? Yeah, check out his highlight tape. Solid yeah. string it's of uh, awesome moves. It's somebody that the Dolphins have made on record saying that this is a guy we got to get the ball in his hands more somehow, some way. He's just electric. Yeah. Uh, Rico Gathers at 287. Yeah, showed you some flashes in the preseason. Caught Why some not? touchdowns. Got a little hype. I'm actually kind of surprised it's this freaking low. I am too. I didn't, I, th I thought, I, I thought mean, he's like a darling. You, yeah, he's a, he's like a cult hero. Right. Another I one of those. Didn't expect 287. Yeah. Jerome Brown, we talked about him in the free agent podcast a yep. little at 291. Jermaine Curse at 297. That seems like that seems ridiculous to Nobody me. Nobody even watched this. Right. Curse was very startable for a good oh, chunk yeah. of last year. At 297, I mean, maybe the maybe the Chiefs or the Chiefs, maybe the Jets, Jets bring in some more help and maybe a Noonwa comes back and maybe that's why he's buried down here a little bit more. But who knows what's gonna happen with Robbie Anderson and all that kind of stuff right. there. But Curse at 297 is kind of like I thought he showed yeah. Very well. Why not put him Took on the bottom of the roster? Took a huge step forward this last season. And then to round this thing out, one pick later, B. Marsh at 298. B. Marsh. I mean, why, why not? not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Come on. Because he could come back and then uh, and he wants to keep playing. He's been really nicked up. Yeah. Which is kind of, he's he's kind of been that way his whole career. He's been able to play through some of that stuff. Um, but he's hit a couple years of bad stretches here. I don't know where he's going to be, if he's going to be a, a giant or not. But at 298, put him on there and, and just hope for the best. Maybe you just use him for a game freak. or two. Yeah. And he can score t He can score you a touchdown, move the chains. So Why not? He's super cheap. Yeah. He's, he's been a producer in this league. You can catch maybe a little lightning in a bottle on a guy who maybe, maybe he retires. Who knows? But yeah. right now at 298, he was just a, a huge name at the bottom of a list. Why right. not? You're right. Yeah, it's kind of like, damn, he's all the way down here. Sure, let's do it. Oh, let do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's been a long. We've been a long day. We just we put we just did two podcasts back to back. Ready to uh, ready to call it a night. I know. What do you got for us? Hit just us up get on us Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles at IMC Myers at Dynasty Big Co at J Wayne's World. Please give us a five star review on iTunes. You just have to click the little five stars. That's it. It's that simple. So simple. We'd greatly appreciate it. It helps us out. helps us get on the top of the list. helps us reach more people. So please and thank you. Hit subscribe on your platform of choice. Podbean, Google, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Go on to YouTube. Hit subscribe there. Check out the videos we're putting up. It's a pretty cool little platform. Another way to help us get, our, get the word out about us. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us. Until next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game. Peace.